Chapter 3, The Templeton Twins Ask a Question. When Professor Templeton emerged from his study late that afternoon, he was deep in thought as usual. For this reason, he failed to notice certain unusual things the twins had done while they were making dinner. You heard me. They were making dinner. They sometimes did this, and it was no big deal to any of the Templetons. How could two 12-year-olds do such a thing? Oh, please. They boiled water for spaghetti and heated up a jar of pasta sauce and chopped a head of lettuce into hunks and poured bottled salad dressing on it. As far as they were all concerned, this was a splendid dinner, and they had it all the time. The professor did not notice that the dining room table had been moved a little and that his place had been set opposite where he usually sat. He would not have bothered he would not have been bothered by any of these rearrangements had he been aware of them, but he wasn't. Instead, he greeted the twins in a distracted way, checking the day's mail, wash it, washed his hands, and sat down at the table. In the kitchen, John spooned some spaghetti onto a plate, topped it with sauce, and placed some of the lettuce beside it, then pretended to be extremely casual and ordinary about everything. Abigail carried the plate, out into the dining room and placed it before her father. Thank you, dear. It looks lovely, said the professor, his mind elsewhere. But this, by this, I do not mean that the poor man's brain had been removed from his head or taken to a different location, but that he was thinking about spaghetti and salad. He was thinking about, he wasn't thinking about spaghetti and salad. He was thinking about other things, in fact, about an article he was reading. You'll be interested to learn that the professor used one of his own inventions to read magazines and journals while eating. He called this invention the foot-activated compressed air powered page turner with a clip-on mount. This, as you can see, is a perfectly dreadful name. So we'll refer to this invention as F-A-C-A-P-P-T-W-C-O-M. He originally created this device for people who play the piano. It consisted of a pedal on the floor connected to a rubber hose. When you stepped on the pedal, a blast of air shot through the hose into a no nozzle clipped onto the, sheet, onto the sheet music you were reading. The blast of air turned the page. You laugh, but turning the page is an important function for piano players who read music while they're playing and who cannot lift their hands from the keys. How important is this function? It is so important that in serious piano performances, an entire human being is employed to turn pages. I know you think I'm making this up, but I assure you it is true. Ask your parents, guardians, clergymen, sports coaches, or piano teacher whether or not it's true. Or don't bother with any of them, and just take my word for it. The F-A-C-A-P-P-T-W-C-O-M was meant to f allow piano players to turn their own pages. And it worked more or less. Sometimes the jet of air turned more than one page, which usually which meant the device needed fine tuning, but still. Then the professor discovered that it could also turn the pages of books and magazines, thus enabling him to eat and read at the same time without interrupting either the eating or the reading. He had not yet perfected the device, so it was not for sale anywhere. But he had high hopes for its success in both the piano playing world and the read while eating world. While the professor had, while the professor was reading and eating, Abigail stood there holding her breath and sneaking glances toward the sneaking glances towards the ceiling. Then she heard a sort of hissing sound and they looked around. It was John whispering from the kitchen, Abby, help. Abigail ran into the kitchen. There was her brother holding the fishing pole. Its line ran up ran up to and across the ceiling, crossing the kitchen light fixture, which held it, which held it up. They ran down through the kitchen doorway out into the dining room and ran across the dining room, not they, sorry, then ran down through the kitchen doorway out into the dining room and across the dining room light fixture. It ended finally in the hook and sinker attachment, which dangled high above Professor Templeton's plate. John pointed to the kitchen ceiling. It stuck. Abigail looked. The fishing line, which John was trying to unreal, had snagged on something in the ceiling lamp. Ab Abigail said, oh, for goodness sake, and immediately placed her hands on the counter and jumped onto it. From her perch, Abigail could see the problem. She gave the line a little jerk, and it jumped free of its snag and grew taut. 
that just means tight. John quickly reeled it in a little to keep it under control. Ab Abigail jumped down. Okay, she said, let's go. She dashed back into the dining room just in time to hear her father, his eyes on the ma his magazine, say saying, aren't you eating, children? And then he stopped. He realized that a photograph of a dog was descending from the ceiling directly above his plate. In fact, the dog, a bright white animal with, long, with a long pointed snout, small flopped over triangle ears, and lively dark eyes was staring right at him. My goodness, he said. Papa, Abigail said. She was tense and slightly hunched over. She was tense and slightly hunched over and was making the kind of ultra careful hold your breath face you make when walking across a frozen pond and you hope the ice won't crack beneath you. Can we get this dog? The professor stared at the photograph. Not this very dog, Abigail said quickly, but this type of dog, please. Please, Papa, John called in from the kitchen. And then, as though awakening from a dream, the professor looked around and noticed the position of the table, which the twins had changed so that their father's whoop, place at dinner would be exactly under the light fixture. He turned and saw how the fishing line went back into the kitchen. How very clever, he murmured. So can we, please, Abigail said. We'll take care of it and walk it and everything. Oh, I don't know, Abby, the professor said. A new dog, it's such a change. But isn't that what we need, Abigail said. The professor looked at her and at the dangling photograph of the dog, which seemed to look back at him. Then he put his fork down and thought. Questions for review. Number one, the F-A-C-A-P-P-T-W-C-O-M works by blowing air at a book, magazine, or sheet music to turn a page. Would it work underwater? Why or why not? Number two, when was the last time you played piano underwater? Write your answer here. Number three, why is it a good idea to call something that sinks a sinker? Write your answer in the form of a brief opera. Uh, bonus points to anyone who does any of the three.